Hello and welcome. I'm George Call. Welcome to part one of a three-part series titled Passing Storm. So I do these three-part series. They're all about 30 minutes apart and we complete this 10 by 15 canvas. And um, so we go through it step by step. Uh, what can I say here? Yeah, uh, the foundation is what we did today. So if you want to figure out how to get a foundation of a painting started, there's a lot of information on how to do that right here. So check into this one and then you can get ready for two and three and finish this painting. Have a nice painting for yourself. All right, what else can I say? Get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. In other words, paint a lot, okay? All right, here we go. Part one. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series. This one is called uh, Passing Storm. This is the Tetons, um, north of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Okay. Boy, um, I love what's going on in the background with the, the clouds, the mountain peeking through. But I'm not so thrilled with the foreground. It's kind of boring. So what I did with my drawing this morning was to make a break in here and show more background. So there's dark here, dark here with the trees, and then have a entrance into the background area. So that was my idea for composition. And uh, let's get started with drawing, okay? So I'm gonna start with a, a little bit of blue and some light gray. A little bit of transparent oxide red. Transparent oxide red just a touch. Probably need a lot more. So I did more this, this, more gray, more blue. Touch of transparent oxide red. All right. That'll be just want to mix up something I can see on my canvas. Some of you like to tone your canvas. I get that. Please do it. Um, and we will be moving along here. So I want to figure out where this foreground is going to be. I'm going to put it down here somewhere. I'm going to lower it a little bit. And then I see this beautiful area here where we have some cloud up in here. I'll bring this in a little bit more. And then the foreground is going to really dip here and then come up with a couple jags and then come over like this. And then there's another kind of lost hill coming up right here, and he's kind of lost in the clouds, and over here. Okay, I think there's a couple things going on here. One is this, and then there's another one that comes down here. Okay, so I want to have a hill here that comes up. Hill. And a big dip right here, kind of to the left of the big area that's going to draw your eye, eye there, and then kind of come over into lower. I'm going to start darkening up my mixture here with blue, transparent oxide brown, yellow ochre, blue. Blue, print, cad yellow, I'm going to get rid of my drawing brush, well maybe I'm going to leave it a little bit more, let me get some more shapes in here. So now I'm looking at my sketchbook and I notice that that's where I'm going to have my 
darks on the left. And then I'm going to have a more dominant here on the right. And I think I need a new few darks in here. Not many. And then I'm going to have the three big kings over here. And these are going to be at a different angle. All right, I'm going to go from there and change brushes. And I'm going to go to a number six. Oh, let me keep with the scrubbers. I'm going to stick with a four rosemary. 2025, it's still pretty stiff. I'm going to darken up my mixture with transparent oxide red, blue, a little bit of viridian, and a little bit of cad yellow medium. Thoroughly mixing it as you can see. As you can see, I'm not dilly-dallying. I'm really moving along here. You can stop and start any time to catch up with me. just want to get in some good solid value colors here. Just getting a touch of insole in here. And to get some darks in here to where my value is going to be. I think I'm going to run a dark across here to make my darks connected. And now I'm going to move to the background hill behind it. I'm just, there's a lot going on. In, I know you're looking intensely at that image and you say a lot going on, but I want to just squint down on it and choose one value color. So I'm going to add some um, gold, um, ochre gold, to the dark mixture I have. Ochre gold, ochre gold. Cleaning my brush a little bit. Gooping it up well with this. More gold, a little bit more the gray. And you can see, even on the camera, that there's a value change here. A color value change between the foreground and the background colors. start a painting, but there's a lot of ways to start a painting. This is kind of a common one. But what I do now is I'm a little bit more, uh, I get a little bit more in detail when I block in my, my studio paintings. But uh, this is not a bad way to start a painting. And I want to keep my values kind of thin. So I'm just scrubbing this background color a little bit. And that will give me enough idea to work on top of this later. And that will be in part two. Now, with this foreground, I probably need some sort of interest. So I'm going to go back to maybe, let me get some blue. Transparent oxide red, a little bit of viridian, a little bit of yellow ochre, and let's put some stuff here that you know gives us some idea that there's some other things happening in the foreground. 
and I'll put a little bit of a slant on it too, just by, which is not true. This uh, particular location I've uh, painted it a couple times. I've had the privilege to paint with my brother here, and he knew nothing about painting, but he's a good learner, and uh, so he watched me intensely and uh, painted along with me. I think the first time I painted was with Ken Thiessen, my friend, uh, painting friend from Illinois. And uh, he showed me about Taggart Lake up behind here. The, it's the trailhead for Taggart Lake. What a beautiful spot. Quite a popular walk so in the park. So there's a lot of people there that you'll run into, families. But boy, it's stunning, I have to say that. I want to get some uh, Viridian and some gray here, light gray. Viridian, light gray, Viridian. Still too dark. Get some white in there. Get some gray. Get some Viridian. Come on. Too much Viridian. We killed it. Let's add some dark gray. Dark gray. I went too much. Got to watch that Viridian. It's really a powerful. I still like the student grade of Winton. Um, Viridian. It's really nice. I can add a little bit of transparent oxide red to this. Okay, back to silver. Silver. And a little bit of Viridian. And I'm just going to go with kind of a medium dark gray. Still using the old scrubber. trying to get down to my little groove there. And I think you get kind of the idea of what we're looking at. I think I'll use some of that up in here. There's some areas up here I want to lighten up. Okay. I don't know. I saw that in the reference. It's some sort of a hill there. Let's get up into it as the mountains. I'm going to mix this all together, move it off to the side. It's kind of a nice gray, green. Very nice. Alrighty, I'm looking for my razor blade scraper and I don't have it handy. Oh, here it is. Just trying to control my palette here. And before I go up above, I get 17 minutes. I'm sitting pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to a cleaner uh, number three, 2025. Just a kind of a scrubber still. It's worn down. And I want to get up into this area here. All righty, so. There's kind of a gray, blue uh, area here. I need more gray in that thing. This is dark gray and ultra. Let me get just a tad of Gamsol on there. And it really dips down here and kind of like this. And try to just look in at the reference as best I can over my right shoulder and and I'm going to have some of that up in here too.
I may have drawn that wrong. I may have to do a shape. Here's a shape correction right here. This kind of comes down. And I think this is a little too high, so he's out of here. Let me go back to seeing if I can bring this guy up. And he is going to go over here with some blues. And then some lights down below there. I know this is kind of scratchy, but it's pretty solid. And still, I'm keeping that paint thin. All right, there's a really, really light tan below it, so I'm going to go transparent oxide red and white, a white. Boy, I need a clean brush. I have to really clean this thing out of here. All right, I'm even going to get a clean rag to do that. Okay, transparent oxide red and white and more white. And I'm going to add silver to that. You know, I'm going to add some light viridian to that to really give it some zing. I see some green in that mixture right there, so I'm going to put it in. Here we go. More gray, more white. And I think there's some white right in here and over in here too. But mostly right in this area do I see the light. All right, let me get back and judge some of these shapes and values. I think I'm a little too large with this, and I'm going to have to bring up these trees. But I don't have any mixture handy to do that, but I'll worry about that later. That'll be some of my homework. Off camera, bring this line up. All right, let's get into some transparent oxide. We're going to go up into this area where the light is hitting the mountains. It's coming through the mountains. Naples, transparent oxide red, and white. And I'm going to put that in here and here. And in here. Traces of that stuff. And that's going to come right down here. And the rest is snow. I know there's some darker part of this, but I think I just want to now forget it in the right place. Let's get up into the sky to finish off the blocking. I'm going to pick up this stuff here and here and smear out the green. Might be able to use that for the sky. I need a lot of blue in there, so I'm going to get some royal in here, see what happens. That didn't do it, so I'm going to get some blue. And I just need some good gray and white and pretty light gray, which I'll put right in here. You can hear Miss Studio Cat in the background wanting attention from me to pet her. But she got her pets this morning. Her food bowl is full. Okay, let me see here. And I need a little bit of more green. And I'm going to put that on one side of the the light gray. Green. Just a touch of it. I used light viridian in there. Alright, let's go back to scrubbers. And uh, I'm going to go back to my number two or three. This is my three. And I want to get my dark design in first. And I really see that coming here. Too dark, I have to lighten it.
and I see some of it in other places as well as over here and here. But this is pretty dark stuff in a few places. This is my dominant dark right here, right over the right over the mountain here. Okay, now I'm going to go in with some lighter grays. This is kind of a medium, and I'm going to put them up right here. So I'm going to go back to medium again for here. More medium gray and here. And now the lighter grays, which would be in here. Uh-oh, I just knocked out, I think, one of my mountains here. Sorry about that. I have to pay attention here. Yes. Moving along a little too quick. And let's go back now to kind of a medium gray up in here. And more medium gray here and lighter and greener gray here. Okay. Just trying to get the edges of my canvas there and I haven't touched that, that's the snow, but I'll put white in there. But uh, for now, that would be the main thing here. Now I need a shape change, as I mentioned on one of my mountains. So I'm going to do that, um, and see if I can increase the size of these guys here. So I'm rubbing out some of my stuff here that needs to be done to make it bigger. Okay, that was a ultra blue. Transparent oxide red, maybe ultra blue and yellow ochre, yellow ochre. It's got to go lighter, so let me get some gray in there and let me get some gold ochre in there. Come on, get lighter. Got to get lighter. Come on, let me see if that's working. That's working. There we go. That is my shape change. I'll lighten this up a little bit in there. And let me darken these trees. I'm going to go more blue, more transparent oxide brown, touch of iridium. And let me get these guys in a little bigger. And let me get these guys a little darker and bigger. And I need to run some darks, transparent oxide reds, I think, through some of this stuff in here. And I've added that, kind of played around with some of these edges also. All right, let me get back, check my time, and see how we are doing. All right. You know, from a value standpoint and a shape standpoint, I think we're doing pretty good. Let me see here. Boom. Yeah, I'm about right with the drawing. 
it just so happened my shape of my canvas, which is a 10 by 15 oil on gator board, um, canvas on oil on gator board, um, is just about the same size as my monitor over to the right. Um, so I can't get my monitor over to where you can see it very easily. Oh, I see. You can see I have this monitor, and it's just about the same size. And uh, if you've got a monitor like this, it's good to um, download these images. All right, what I'm going to be doing um, soon is putting these images up on my website somehow for you to acquire. So you just don't have to look at this screen and do it that uh, you see in, in the upper right hand corner. All right, I'm going to go now into the clouds and make some connections and loosen some edges. And I know it's light enough because I've really scrubbed it in that I can work over the top of this when I come back into doing part two. I'm going to have one of these darks come in a little bit more. And now I need to go to some lighter grays. The greens in here. And I massacred my mountain in here, so I better get him in with some ultra blues. I'll get him now. So I think we got some gray in the ultra blues. And let me see if this will work. Pretty close. I need to go darker gray with the blue, blue and darker gray. And I think we have him coming up right in here somewhere. Just a hint of him. And I think he needs to be made a little bit more distinct here and here. And I think there's one that's kind of over here too. Kind of a sawtooth there. I think this goes a little higher, and he goes down like this, and like this, just working my values and shapes a little bit, well I've got a chance to do it. I think some of these blues can be a little darker, so here's ultra blue, and I'm going to get a little bit of darker gray, and I'm going to go in with some darker blues, particularly over in this area, it seems to be really dark and in here too. Looks like I got a little too close to my hill, so I'll recreate that. It's a little too dark, sorry about that. Lighten it up. And let's go back to the sky and Soften some of the edges and take care of the very, very edges of the painting. Sometimes I just don't get clear to the edge and then at the end of the painting I have to do all that work to get that done. I'm going to get some greeny, bluey stuff up in here and yeah, up in here too. I don't know, whatever this mixture is right here. And then there's some really strong blue right up here somewhere. I don't know what that is. Better soften it a little. But there is some warms with this mountain up there. And that's what we got to take care of. Okay, so I'm going to keep these thin. Am I picking up any? You know, heavy excess I have just with my paper towel and softening the edges. All right, I think that brings us to an end of part one, and that is a, a value shape uh, block in. So everything's thin. We've uh, figured out where our shapes are. Uh, first thing I did was to make a sketch, made a little bit of design change in the foreground, and uh, so far so good, you know.
It's a foreground, middle ground, background painting. And uh, after the last three weeks of doing kind of in the woods painting, this is a nice change to get back and do this. Well, anyway, thanks so much for coming by for part one of, um, what is this thing, uh, storm, uh, passing storm. And uh, let's uh, see you tomorrow in part two. All right. Bye-bye.